Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for watching over us as we slept last night. Thank you for keeping us safe throughout the week. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have upon us. Thank you for being such a loving and forgiving God. Thank you for all the days of our life. Heavenly Father, we'll continue to worship you. We'll continue to praise your holy name, for you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for our children and all our loved ones. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you have upon us. Heavenly Father, we know without you, we are nothing. We'll continue to praise you. We'll continue to worship you. For you are worthy, Heavenly Father. You are worthy. That we know, Heavenly Father, there's nothing that we can do without you. We need you every minute, every second of each and every day, Heavenly Father. For you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, Heavenly Father. And we know without you, we cannot make it. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for watching over our children. We ask that you, Heavenly Father, continue to watch over them, Heavenly Father, to uplift them, Heavenly Father, keep them safe from all idols and things that they shouldn't be involved in, Heavenly Father, for the world is in a turmoil of Heavenly Father. We ask that you continue to watch over them, guide them and lead them in the righteous way, Heavenly Father, for they need you, Heavenly Father. They need you each and every day, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We know, Heavenly Father, that you would do it as we ask of you to do for us because that's the kind of God that you are. Heavenly Father, we'll continue to serve you, only you, no one else. We'll put no one before you, Heavenly Father, no other God, only you, Heavenly Father. And we thank you and we praise your holy name. Heavenly Father, we declare that you continue to watch over this church Help us grow, Heavenly Father. Help us grow in our finances in all areas of the church. Help us grow in the members, Heavenly Father. For we need more members in our church, Heavenly Father. And we thank and we praise you, Heavenly Father, because we know that you will bring them here. Heavenly Father, we know that you will. Heavenly Father, we ask you that you look over and watch so we won't have to so it won't be no more begging or borrowing. We'll just be raised up from all of that, Heavenly Father. No more poverty, none of those things, Heavenly Father, no more. We ask that you raise us above all of those, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all that you have done, Heavenly Father. Thank you for keeping us safe, Heavenly Father. Thank you for keeping the ones that's on that way here safe, Heavenly Father. We know, Heavenly Father, without you, we cannot make it. So we need you, Heavenly Father. We declare that you continue to watch over us to continue to guide us, protect us, Heavenly Father, and lead us in the righteous way, Heavenly Father. And we would do all our work, Heavenly Father, to, to serve you and only you, Heavenly Father. Only you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name. We will continue to worship you. We worship you, Heavenly Father. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all, your, all that you have done. You are so worthy to be praised, Heavenly Father. We know without you, we couldn't even walk. We couldn't even talk, Heavenly Father. But you, you wake us up every morning, Heavenly Father, and you say, it's not your day to be done, Heavenly Father. I still have work for you, Heavenly Father. Thank, so you, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you have done for us. We know that you are... You are worthy to be praised, Heavenly Father. You are worthy. We thank you, Father. We praise your holy name. There is none like you. There is none like you. You are above all things, Heavenly Father. You are everything to us, Heavenly Father. And we will continue to praise and worship you, Heavenly Father. We will continue to praise you. We will praise you, Heavenly Father, from morning to night, Heavenly Father. The prayer will never cease, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We glorify your holy name. There is none like you, Heavenly Father. We love you, Heavenly Father. We love your son, Heavenly Father. We thank you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love that name. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. 
Heavenly Father, you loved us for no reason at all. We didn't give you a reason. You just love us. And we know, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to love us. We will continue to worship you. We praise you, Heavenly Father. We uplift you, Heavenly Father. You are the most high. You are the most high. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for watching over us as we slept. For we did not know where we were, but you brought us back. You brought us back, Heavenly Father. We are still here to testify, Heavenly Father. So each and every one of us should be up in here testifying and thanking you for what you have done for us. Because you have, you have said, Heavenly Father, it is not your time to go yet. So we are still here. You're still giving us a chance, Heavenly Father. You're still giving us a chance to do your work, Heavenly Father. And we will continue to do your work all the days of our life, Heavenly Father. Because you have done so much for us, it's time for us to pay you back, Heavenly Father. Because we've done you we know we would not make it so we thank you heavenly father you are everything to us heavenly father there is none like you in the name of jesus we worship you heavenly father in jesus name we pray Amen. heavenly father thank you thank you because you are loving god thank you because you are our father Thank you because you are our mother, our father, our sister, our brother. You are everything to us, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to continue to watch over us, Heavenly Father. To continue to rise up above everything, Heavenly Father. Continue to watch over our church, Heavenly Father, to make it grow, Heavenly Father. Our finances will grow, Heavenly Father. Our love, our faith, everything will grow in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's open to our hymn book, GHS 100. My father knows. GHS one hundred.
Amen. Let's continue to pray. Please, let's be in the mood of prayer. Avoid any form of dis dis distraction. Continue to pray as the message is coming forth. That, that the God will touch your heart. And at least that God will prepare your heart, that your heart will be a fertile ground for the world. <coughs> that the power of, in the word of God will do something new in your life and make a difference in your life. That you will not just receive the word as men talking or from man, but rather it will be from the throne, it will be a God speaking to you himself. We begin to pray. Pray for the instrument that God will use. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we are praying, O oh Lord, that you will use our resources that you are placed in our hands, in our churches, to send the gospel light, blessed gospel light, to all that are asking us to bring the gospel to them. Use us, Lord. Cancel selfishness completely from every heart, and let there be the sacrifice of love. In Jesus' name, we pray. This moment, we are talking about Jesus once again. We are talking about Jesus this time as the great provider. We're looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 35. Luke 22, verse 35. And he said unto them, When I send you without pause and script and shoes, let ye anything. And he said, Nothing. Here Jesus Christ reminded his own disciples. He was about to go away from them. He had sent them out on a short-term missionary journey. And he sent them out two by two that they will go to the people of Israel and seek and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now, he was about to leave them. He will be sending them no more on a short missionary journey, but on a permanent missionary work. He will be telling them they will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon them and they will preach the gospel. They will be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. And should in case any of them should be thinking, where would the resources come from? He reminded them of the past so that they will know what will happen in the future. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he provided before, he was going to provide in the future. That's why he said, did you lack anything when I sent you out without pause, without script, without shoes? And then they said, they lack nothing. It's wonderful then to serve the Lord. Scriptures confirm and the history also and experience, they all testify that he will provide and he will supply all our needs and the needs for his work. That's why we're considering Jesus Christ now as a great provider. There are three points we're going to consider. Number one, our supply from the Lord. Our supply from the Lord. Number two, our sacrifice of love. Our sacrifice of love. And number three, our sufficiency in the Lord. Number one, our supply from the Lord. He supplied all their needs. In fact, there was a time they needed money. And then he told Peter to take a hook. And then he went to the riverside and said, The fish you, cast, uh, you are able to catch, open the mouth and take the money. And go and pay for yourself and myself. If he did that at that time, he can still provide today. Many times we think we need the rich so that the work will be provided for. You will remember the time of a famine in the land of Israel. God said unto Elijah, I have commanded a widow woman uh, to supply your need and to feed you. And so even though we feel that our regions are poor, our states are poor, our nations are poor, yet in the midst of that poverty, the Lord can supply adequately for his work. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 to start with, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You might say we're speaking to the individual. That's the way we think. Because whenever we read this passage, we always quote it to the individual. But do you know he was telling the church at Philippi, he was saying, you are a church. 
you administer to my need. And I'm assuring you that God will supply your need as a church. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If he was able to do that at that time, he's still able to do that today. Amen. And he will do it in Jesus' name. Amen. We do not plan on the basis of our resources. We plan on the basis of the resources of heaven. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. As a church, of course, as an individual, we can. And as a church, we can, and we will in Jesus' name. In uh, Psalm 23, Psalm 23 verse 1, verse the one. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We know that he is the shepherd of the individual. The bishop and the shepherd of our soul is also the shepherd of Israel and the shepherd of the whole church. And so the church can testify, the Lord is my shepherd, because of that I shall not want. It's just like uh, what uh, Abraham was telling his son Isaac. Because Isaac knew that everything was ready for the sacrifice. The only thing is, where is the lamb, where is the ram for the sacrifice? And the answer that, um, uh, that Abraham gave, he gave that answer by faith. And the same answer we're giving today, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And then so they went both of them together. He had not seen that ram, and I see you didn't see that ram. God himself will provide. He'll provide for himself. He'll provide for the work that he has given us to do. Can you give the work and not give the means of spreading it? Can you give us Jesus Christ and not give the means of publicizing him? Can you open the door in Africa and they said we are the people they are waiting for and then you will not give the means? That's not the way God operates. When he opens the door, the means and the things to use in getting through that door, he will also give unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Here we're told about the Lord Jesus Christ, about what he has done for us. Chapter 8 verse 9. Here it says, for ye know, we know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty uh, ye might be rich. We'll be rich in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is eternally rich in all things. The rich cannot be in communion with the poor unless he ministers to their necessities. We were poor. We had nothing. He was very rich, eternally rich. He could not have communion with us without sharing his riches with us because there would have been and, uh, a kind of chasm, unpassable God between us. But because he loved us and he was going to have fellowship with us, he left his throne, he left his riches to come down to us so that he can raise us from the dunghill and from our poverty. For our Lord to have fellowship with us, he had to impart his own abounding wealth unto us. And through his love and sacrifice, we now possess salvation. We have eternal inheritance. His gifts to us are beyond measure. He gives, number one, abundantly. Number two, he provides constantly. Number three, he provides readily. And then number four, he provides generously. And so as you grow back, there will be abundant provision for you. And the constant flowing of the riches from, his, uh, from the kingdom will be coming to you. And it will be ready at the time we need it, and it's going to give us generously. We go to point number two now, our sacrifice of love. He makes the supply, and he gives unto us, and then we now have the sacrifice of love. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but to him which died for them and rose again. We're not to live to ourselves anymore. In fact, what we tell individual Christians, we say, if you are really born again, then your heart has been touched, your pocket will be touched, you will not be living for yourselves anymore. But the same thing we tell the individual, we need to tell the local church. The local church will not be living for themselves anymore. A local church will not spend all their money upon themselves. A regional church will not spend all their money on themselves. And the church in the state will, will not spend all our money on ourselves. The same thing at the headquarters here, if he has died for us, we die to sell. We die to personal consideration. We need this in our church. 
We need it in the other church too. And we're not going to live for ourselves anymore. And therefore, it requires sacrifice on our part. In Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, verses uh, 10 and 11. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. We're talking about our sacrifice of love. Here we're told, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. It's a work and it's labor and it's something we're spoke about and it's a sacrifice which he has showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we thank God you've done it in the past. You are still doing it now and you will still do it in Jesus' name. Amen. God will be no man's debtor. Anything you give is going to multiply a hundredfold, a thousandfold, is going to repay you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, if I said that in CAC Church, if they invited me, and then I told them that anything you give for the work of the Lord, that's where they believe prophecy. And uh, I, if I tell them the Lord will provide for you and multiply it a hundredfold, those people, CSC people, uh, Assemblies of God people, if I said that there and they invited me specially to come and prophesy for them, they are going to make their pocket, they are going to turn it out and give everything. They said the deeper life for a general superintendent by prophecy said, whatever we give is going to multiply a hundredfold. But when I come back home, and I tell our people, and I said, whatever you give, God is going to multiply a hundredfold. When if I say in Jesus' name, you just say amen in the natural. <laughs> but this time, you are going to believe prophecy. Amen. And God will multiply a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. And you see, when you pay tithe, for example, Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. We're looking at it from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3. Reading it from verse 10. Here we have the promise of the Lord. Of course, the commandment of the Lord to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I believe it's going to happen. Yeah. As uh, you know, we contribute, make it a sacrifice, a sacrifice of love. And we're given. The Lord is going to repay everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. How much do we owe our Lord? Think about it. Your eternal life, your salvation, your peace of mind, your sanctification, your hope of getting to heaven, the resources you have, your family that you have, your children that you have, the health that you have, the protection that you have. We owe the Lord everything. And then, I see, what has he done for us? I see not forgiven our sins. I see not treating our name in the book of life. I see not prepared heaven for us. Is he not preparing us for heaven and eternal life? Is he not laying up for us treasures, eternal treasures? What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? If he has done all that and is still doing all that, then we need to do something for Jesus worthy of his love. And we will do it. Amen. I said we will do Amen. it. How will you feel when your master eventually comes? If you have to confess that you did nothing for him, but you kept your love shut up like a stagnant pool, not flowing a force to his work, you will be ashamed on, on such a day. If he said, you could have done this, that, that year, you could have done this, that year. If you are taking that thing and you are put it where I wanted it, look at the resources I would have opened up for you and given to the work and even giving to your family personally. And then we'll say, I've been a loser because of what I didn't yield, I didn't give up. We're not going to be like that. Amen. We're going to give, it's going to be a sacrifice of love. Amen. And the Lord will bless us abundantly. Amen. Number three now is our sufficiency in the Lord. Our sufficiency in the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3, reading from verse 4 and verse 5. And such trust we have through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient for ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You'll find him to be sufficient. Amen. All those things that uh, you have been given, the goals and the things that were said, and you are thinking, ah, will I make it? You will go beyond it. Amen. And where it appears to be nothing, the Lord will so provide for you, it will surprise you. Amen. And, uh, you know, somebody, I learned of two farmers, uh, one was uh, not a real Christian, the other one was a Christian. And this Christian was known to have a generous spirit. Apart from giving tithes, he would give to the poor, give to the church, give to everyone. 
but the other fellow was, you know, holding everything, guarding everything, holding on to everything, and did not have much. And, but the one that was giving was appearing richer than the other fellow. And so he bothered the other farmer, that's the unbeliever. And he came to him and he said, uh, I don't understand your situation. You, all, you are giving, and uh, you know, this is your Christian faith. You give to people, you give to God, you give to church, you give every time, and you are becoming richer than those of us who are not giving anything. What is your secret? Oh, then he said that uh, there's no deep secret here. It says, uh, you know, the use the language of a farmer. I shovel to God, and he shovels back to me. And so the other fellow reasoned a little and said, that's all right. If you shovel to God and he shovels back to you, how is it you are getting richer than those of us who are not doing anything? Oh, he says, you don't understand. God uses a bigger shovel than mine. I use a small shovel and, you know, I push the little thing on. And then he just uses, a, you know, a shovel that his supernatural strength can carry. A kind of shovel that you've never seen the size before. And uh, that's what he wants you to do. You shovel to God and then what will he do? to me. God bless you. Yeah, and yeah. so our sufficiency is in the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having, always having, there's no time you will lack if you make that sacrifice of love. Always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. There is no good work that the Lord has laid before us that he cannot provide for us to have sufficiency in all things so we may abound unto every good work. God is our sufficiency. Mm -hmm. Better have God as your provider than have the bank of your country, the bank of your state or your region as your possession. The infinite riches of Christ cannot be exhausted. The Lord will be no man's debtor. It is ours to obey and give, and then he will repay us. I said a hundredfold before, he will repay you a thousandfold. Amen. Let us learn the great lesson of the kingdom of God. In watering others, we ourselves are watered. And to get, we must give. And uh, to make ourselves happy, we must make other people happy. And to become spiritually vigorous, we must see the spiritual good of other people. After all these things we are even talking about, is it not the possession of the Lord that he has given us? Does it belong to us? Does not everything belong to the Lord? Is it not out of what he has? We are taking a little and we are giving back to him in First uh, Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses uh, 12, 13, and 14. First Chronicles chapter uh, 29, reading from verse 12. Here we are told both riches and honor. Come of thee, thou reignest over all. In thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Now therefore our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For of the things, for, for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. That's what God is saying. He said, I bless that church, I bless that location, I bless your region, I bless your nation. Out of what I've given unto you, uh, can you show some, you know, love and can you reciprocate and bring a little so that we can reach the people that need to be reached. And when we do that, it will give us more blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. There is that scattereth and becometh richer. And but there's still there, there are people that hold on to too much and they become poor. We're going to release our funds and then the Lord is going to make everything sufficient for us and the family and the church and everywhere. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. He's a provider. And as he provides for us, he wants us uh, to make it ready, available for the work of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. I don't know the reason why God brought this message. When you look at the sad scripture we are supposed to listen to, it was the same thing. I did not even know. It was very unusual for our teacher to get note of my then my mind was it will not able to make it because of one of our discussion we made. But when we started the message, I saw that the God has a reason for it. 
for every one of us because this is the exactly message you will have delivered. Call upon the name of the Lord. Both him that God has used for us to listen to this message and we that we have listened to it. Look at that look at that look at that uh, description of the pastor. I shuffle to the Lord, God shuffle to me. And then if I start share the testimony of what God done this week, week I know is going to is going to pervert it. You will be surprised. It's like this message is for me. Call upon the name of the Lord. Pastor said, when God, when you are chauffeuring to the Lord, you are using small chauffeur. If it is me that preach this message, it will be because uh, he's in the charge of the church, he's in, the, in charge of the car, he's in charge of the cho- uh, church car, he's in charge of this, he's the one. That's why he's preaching this. God must have a purpose for it. If I say God wants to use him himself to speak to you on my behalf, I will not lie. But if I say God has a purpose for him, for every one of us to listen to this message, I'm, I will not lie. I prepared for the message. I was not even thinking of taking it over. And then when I look at the message, we are going to look instead to listen to instead. I was not even thinking about it. I just speak it as it's come. And it was late. Now I rea- I, I saw that the same message our our teacher would have taught us. That was the same message GS preached. That's me. God has a purpose for it. For every one of us, we have been demanding. We have been asking God this time around. God has sent His servant to demand from you as a deeper lifer. He said, "If I go to CAC and I pay this kind of message, they will put all down their pocket." As I'm still saying it, I'm still, it's, it's like God. Why can't you just take this account from me so that the church can know? All what you have told us is not I'm trying to exaggerate. I'm trying to use upper bowl. But to know the source of the blessing. Call upon the name of the Lord. That you will not see that and be calculating with God. The mind of giving to the work of the Lord. The mind of not looking back. The mind of not looking onto your pocket. The mind of taking God as is your best lover. There's nothing you cannot do. All of us, we remember when we are on the way. And we are about to marry. We are about to do that. We know that, that wife on the way. There's nothing we cannot buy. But that God is greater than that, your lover. No matter what that lover said you should do, it's not too big for you to do it. But remember, that God is, is greater than your lover. Why can't you take God first? Where are you do calculation? Where are you stingy? On what God himself provided for you? And you do not let it go. As a result of this, you are, you are folding your hand. You are like a small boy. That God gives something. A father gives you something. And the, the father wanted to say, bring it back. I have another thing to say. The, 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 the boy will say, no, I'm not going to give it back. That's why that, the father have a greater thing for him. And that's why the little we go with the Lord, the little we are receiving from him. Call upon the name of the Lord. That God himself will interpret this message into your heart. I'm 
not the one that preached it. I did not plan for it. Our teacher did not plan for it. But I know God has his purpose for every one of us to listen to it. I'm expecting you to be greater than this. Call upon the name of the Lord. That by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Stingy. Instead of paying tight, our hand is tight to what God has given to us. God will release us from the bondage. God will speak to you. God will speak to me. And you will see the vision yourself. You will see the dream yourself. The spirit of sowing. Without doubting, without looking back to the house of the Lord. To the fellow brethren. God will give to you in Jesus' name. There's a lot of things I'm supposed to say. But just because of the situation of, this, of, the, of the church, because of my status, I only find it very difficult. So that it will not be because of money. The pastor is pursuing us. But if I have the privilege of uploading this message, I want you to go and listen to it again. And my life is testimony. Call upon the name of the Lord. That ends forth as a result of what you have been give, give, I mean, you have been give, given. I mean, giving the joy of the Lord will not elude you in Jesus' name. God will increase you. The mighty hand of the Lord will be upon you. And the grace to digest this message, God will give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. Praise the Lord. Once again, welcome to the Sunday service. By the grace of God, every Sunday like this, we eat our, eat our Sunday service. We start by 8.50 and closed by 11.30. And I want us to also keep in, inviting our friends and, and families and neighbors so that they will come and join us. Amen. Every Monday is our Bible study. In the time we will come together to explore and to look into the word of god you know how important it is the word of god is very very important if you don't have the knowledge of the word it will be very difficult for you to stand it will be very difficult for you to please god and to live the acceptable life that god wants you to live so when you come and you keep hearing the word of God, it will broaden your understanding and you'll be more closer to him. If, don't just come alone. Invite people so that they also will come and enjoy that which you are enjoying. And as you do so, God will increase you in Jesus' name. On Thursday is our online conference prayer. 
from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. To join the online conference prayer is a dial-in number, which is 712-775-7035. 712-775-7035. And the access code is 344823. It's just one hour program. And as you do so, you pray for others, for the prayer requests that other people are bringing in. And you pray and you intercede for, for, for the church and for, and for people in general. God, we do things for you that you don't that you didn't even ask of he will settle all all your names in jesus name on saturdays if we do have church cleaning workers meeting and as you find time to also come and quick and, and and join us as you clean the house of the lord God will clean your life in Jesus' name. It is very, very important also. It is a symbol of your love for God and a symbol of, of humility when you come and clean the house of the Lord. And also for the workers' meeting, it is very, very important. Do not miss the workers' meeting. It helps to build you up as a leader in the house of of God. And as you do so, God will make you a pillar and not a caterpillar in Jesus' name. This evening is we do have we will be having our house fellowship in our pastor's house. And it will start by 5:30. Invite your friends. Come let us do the church in the house. And as we come in one and be clothed, we discuss the, the word of God. We share our, our, our testimonies to, to, together. We sharpen each other, iron sharpens iron. And as you find that time to fellowship with us in the house fellowship, you will not remain the same in Jesus' name. And also, let us, um, we've heard the message also, let us also pay attention to the, to the church needs and um, as we support the work of, of God in our finances with, with our time and all that we have, our generation will benefit from it in Jesus' name. I think that will be um, all the elementary announcements. If there is any other announcement our pastor will relate to us, enjoy the rest of the, of, of the service. God bless you. It's time for tithe and offering. Offering time. list our offering for the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We thank you, O God, for your love that changeth not. We thank you for the abundance you've given unto us. We thank you for the good health. We thank you, O God, for the life. And thank you for the power given to us, O God, to make words. Father, from the abundance you've given unto us, Father, we're bringing this, O God, the token in, in support of, of, of the work that you've given unto us. Father, as we give, O God, to move your work forward, we will move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Backward never, forward ever. Amen. Father, there will be no lack, there will be no loss, there will be no limitation. Amen. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we we'll pray. As I give, the Lord is blessing me. As I give, the Lord is blessing me. As I give, the Lord is blessing me. 
as I give, the Lord is blessing me. I will continue to praise the Lord. 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 Never tire. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, I welcome everyone of us to, the, to this service. And then, I don't want to say say apology. I don't want to say it's excuse to my leader that uh, I do like Saul. Uh, what was the name? Uh, Saul sacrificed before the Samuel came. But well, I think there's a reason for everything, and everyone for must have seen the reason. God will help us in Jesus' name. Uh, because of this message, I don't want to be too forward. There's a testimony I will have shared, but I will let it be completed. And then I will. This morning, when I came to the church, because I've read the side the scripture, and that thing was touching me, and I was. Go, uh, it's like I was re reply, blah, blah. Even my checkbook is under the pulpit, you see? So <laughs> I don't use it to anywhere except the church. Uh, except the church. So I was just thinking about those messages. I was just thinking about those messages. And then about the side of scripture. And then I never know that this is the message we are going to listen to. And then if I share what God did for me this week, you will be surprised and i know if god can do it we continue to do it for every one of us in jesus name and the grace of the lord so i want us i don't want to dilute the message but i know god is taking every one of us to greater height and he's going to take us there in jesus name just let us hold up out to the message if i share what god did you will know what the reason why i'm seeing all this and then is is just to uh, maybe I will ask Brad Stephen to teach me that in the super philosophy. What can I use? Maybe I will use the one I know. It's very, very great. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think for most of us that we are uh, leader, I send the message of Pastor Dada to everyone of place. I send everyone of us message. Send the message of Pastor Dada to every one of us about the uh, um, our absence at DC, and then when we look at the tone of the message, we will see that he is very very serious uh, about it. Um, I've done my best to write him back. Not only that I write him back, I send I send my schedule to him. My school schedule, my work schedule. I don't want these people to be distracting me, please. My school schedule and then my work schedule. So that you can know how we have been doing all our best. But it's not only me, it is individual. Uh, Pastor Matthew is not the deeper Bible Church of Charlotte Faith. And he is bothering, I mean, bothering that he is not happy that in all the meeting he does not see us. So, all of us that see the message, we see the content of the message. The reason why I bring it up is that please let us do all what we can do. That we are the one that is going, that is available always, does not mean. Uh, we are foolish or 
or we don't have any other thing to do and then when we look list when we remember the last message of gs about how he was going to one church to the other to the extent that he wanted to buy a car for the pastor meanwhile the pastor was telling him that he was dressing rough but now i think there's nothing anybody cannot they cannot buy for him because of what nobody ever even those, those i mean that message i've never listened to it myself but who knows he has planted a lot without knowing where he was going he has been planted so let us uh, with this kind of message with the one with the other, even if it is our time please god will help us in in jesus name and the grace of the lord will continue to be with everyone of us in jesus name i know what the, our situation here and i know his own situation too but god will balance everything for us in jesus name let us do all what we can do to balance everything I think that's the only thing I have, and then if there's any other thing, I will let us know. So it's time for praise and worship. Brother Stephen will still come and lead us in praise and worship. Christ to our feet for praise and worship. Shake yourself, shake yourself. Praise, give him all the honor, give him all the ad- ad- adoration. Appreciate him, worship him, bless his holy name, exalt him. He is God. There is none like him, there is none beside him. He's bigger than your problems, he's bigger than everything. Open your heart and your mouth and exalt him. the mighty man in Batu, the soon coming king. The earth is the Lord and his, and his fullness thereof. He is the one that is protecting you. If God should open your eyes to see the unknown battle, the invisible battle that he is fighting for you, you will use everything in your body, every breath in you.
the Lord. Yeah. 
of your name. mighty God and he will fill us with power he will fill us with his spirit and everything that he wants us to do we will do it by his power the Bible says it's not by my it's not by your might it's not by his, it's not by your thought it's not by the knowledge education nothing no it's just by the spirit of God that's all we need and we can do wonders just like our fathers did. And our time will not fail God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Invisible God. 
a mortal God. He's an invisible God. He has the power to save. He has the power to deliver. So beat yourself into his hands at this moment. He's immortal God. He has the power to remove all our problems. He has the power to heal us. So we can do, there are things that we say, ah, how can I get this thing done? How can I get this thing done? He has the power. And he can help us do it. By his spirit, he has the power. And he can do it. He can lead us. the Holy Spirit, you know you are a righteous child of God. Call on me now. Tell God to give you his power. Tell him at this moment you need his power. the Lord to have his way in your life. Tell him to have his way in your life. That self, anything, everything that is obstacling our life, that he will feel us. He will feel us to, Jesus will feel us. There will be no place for anything else in our life. Chapter 9.
chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not, or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake unto Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see. 
Therefore, your sin remaineth. May God bless his word in our heart in Jesus' name. We shall listen to your song.
prisoner. The recording of the choir must have been bad. Prisoner. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our mighty Father, we thank you, Lord, because you love us. We thank you, Lord, because of the way you have been talking to us. We thank you, Lord, because of your great name. We thank you, Lord, because you separated us. We thank you, Lord, because and you have been using us mightfully. Father, we thank you, Lord, for taking us back to Bethlehem this morning. We glorify your name because you revive us. We thank you, Lord, because of the what people of the world we call movements that you have done in our life. Father, we pray. You let us know in your word that the Father deal with the child he loves and you have reminded us once again how you love us. To the extent that you remind us about what our commitment will be, not only in money, but also in our time. We pray. You, are give, you have been giving us all this privilege. They will not stand against us in kingdom of God in Jesus' name. They will not stand against our growth in this world in Jesus' name. That your son preached this message. He said, Nobody ever sing that Lazarus blessing am mine. That's why that Lazarus make it to the kingdom of God. But the song of everybody is Abraham blessing am mine. In what sense? When Abraham was here, Lazarus was eating. I mean, Abraham, Abraham was living in plenty. He was able to give out. When he died also, to the extent that Bible told us, Lazarus was still in the I use the local language, you know, chest of Abraham. And then your son said, Abraham owes people in the world. When he got to the kingdom of God, he still owes, he still owes people. He was still a landlord. Father, we pray. All what you are giving to us, you will use it for your glory in Jesus' name. For all the one you have done, Lord, I pray. You say, use it in our life to bring people unto you in Jesus' name. Father, we remove all limitation, all boundary to our success spiritually, financially. Today will be a landmark in our life in Jesus' name. And your name will continue to be glorified. Thank you, O oh Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us be seated. Once again, I welcome everyone of us to today's service. And I pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. The mighty hand of the Lord will continue to follow us everywhere we go in Jesus' name. By the grace of the Lord, this morning I shall speak to us about take away my reproach. I want everyone of us to say it take away my reproach. And I pray. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, by the time we shall live here, we shall live 
with no condemnation in Jesus' name. And the grace of the Lord shall be sufficient for every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. We shall read from the book of Joel. The book of Joel. Joel is among those prophets we call minor prophets in the Bible. And then anyone that see it can read for me, please. Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel two first twenty-eight. That's good for us for including me that we are so used to one all those famous Bible and um, characters you can see. Mm. Praise the Lord. The dwell was telling us that the time is surely come that wonder will happen in our life and miracle will surely happen. I've told us many times about some of the about one of the messages that challenged me in my life about one which I mean which one of our father in the Lord preached. He said, You want to send me an errand, O Lord. I'm ready to go. But as I'm ready to go and do this work for you, three things I'm asking of you. Give me eyes, inner eyes, to able to see vision. So that whenever anything want to happen, whenever miracle is coming, Whenever challenges is coming, I will be able to see and call upon your name. He said, give me inner ear so that I will, I will be hearing you that you are talking to me directly. So that whenever I lean down and I say I'm praying, my own will be beyond faith. It will be a super faith in the sense that as I lean down and I'm talking to you, I'm hearing from you that this is what my God is saying. And if we have mentioned the name of our dad, our father, every one of, every one of us that we have been listening to his message, we will say, we will just be preaching and then in the midst of the message, we will say, my God says this. My father says this. And that one give him a lot of my in the ministry to cover. He said the third thing, my Lord. I know you want to send me an errand. And who am I to reject that errand? But I'm asking for the third one from you. Give me hands, hands of miracle. So that whenever I touch the sick, whenever I pray for the sick, whenever I pray for somebody to be blessed, whenever I touch anything, as, as, as I say it, that's how it's going to be. And God answer his prayer. Like prayer of Solomon was answered. The same thing in this book of Joel, as we have read it in chapter 2, verse 28. As a servant of God, 
as a follower of God, as someone God wants to use in this world that has been corrupted. God was telling us, and the Bible says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, God is going to send His Spirit upon every one of us in Jesus' name. Thank for the time of Jesus Christ. Many of us might have known that a church that even if you don't have Holy Spirit, they won't allow you to go for outreach. And that's the reason why our Father in the Lord left the church. Thank God, thank God for the grace. Because if not the grace of the Lord, many of us, the messages we are preaching is just a flesh clean message. There's no uh, altar of Holy Spirit there. And no wonder. The church it's not full. No wonder. We go out for evangelism. There's no evidence that we are Christian. We are Christian. We are little Christ that we have gone to go and preach the message. No wonder. Every one of us including me we are speaking instead of preaching out of flesh and we are preaching from experience and not according to the way of god but thank god he loves us i don't imagine some of us we have a family member. We have husband, we have wife. We have children, we have those people who we are working with. And then for many years, they have been working with us, we are, they have been talking with us, and see, donkey years, they are not born again. Why? There's no spirit of the Lord in our life. We went out. We distribute tracts. We put it beside our car. The only thing people know is that the spirit of the person that comforted us, the spirit of the person we are preaching, that we are listening to his pre preaching, is affecting us. As a result of this, they know us as a Christian. But for us to be able to say, this is the person I bring to the Lord, is very difficult for us. Why? There's no baptism of Holy Spirit. We are just speaking because we have been coming to Bible study. We have been listening to the, all these kind of messages. We are used to Bible reading. But there's no interpretation of Holy Spirit. There's no power in whatever we are saying. And then, do not be surprised. That is the reason why many of us will be on the pulpit. We preach one thing. And by the time we get out of the pulpit, we act in another way. We know the truth. We are reading the truth. But the Holy Spirit that let, we let us act according to the truth is not there. Shame to many of us. Because we let the death of Jesus Christ be in vain. 
Jesus Christ knows the importance of all these Holy Spirits to the extent that the fact that Peter has gone through a lot of things, we can call University of Theology. Peter have gone through of a lot of lessons, and many of us, they have listened to a lot of things. Jesus Christ himself say they eat together, they drink together, they talk together, they do a lot of things together in the sheep. And there was a time, somebody asked him, he said, see, we, we are fasting, your disciples are not fasting, then leave them alone. As far I'm with them. But after he has left, he said, Go and wait at this particular place till the Holy Spirit come down upon you. Because I have been your background, I've been your baboon. It is on the, on the migrants you have been driving your car. Today I send you out, you came back. And you gave me a testimony that in your name, many people bowed down, these people bowed down, this spirit bowed down, but it is on my grace. But now I'm leaving you. I'm going back to heaven. I know by that, that grace is not going to be there. For now, do not go and preach the message. Go and stay at this particular place till Holy Spirit come upon you. But many of us, that Holy Spirit is not there. And we are not agitating. We are not enforcing our body. We are not put everything we have in order to have that Holy Spirit. We allow flesh to take control. And that's why many people call us a nominal Christian. But I pray. Change is coming today in Jesus' name. You will lay down. And you will see the presence of the Lord in your life. You will be going either driving or walking, and you will see that everything you are doing is not by your power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I know many people want this power, but because of the circumstances that we find ourselves, but I want you to know, the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you in Jesus' name. Do not be tired. Continue to fight the battle. The victory is yours. The Holy Spirit is coming upon you in Jesus' name. And by that power, we shall succeed. Both in the church, in our family, and all areas of our life in Jesus' name. But moving to your Bible. Move closer to your Bible. When you wake up, my Bible. No Bible, no breakfast. No scripture, no sleeping. And I know as you are doing all this thing, the word of the law will continue to be interpreted into your life in Jesus' name. Throughout the Bible. I want you to know all what I've been telling us this morning is a reproach. And it's something we need to deal with. If I see a very good example now, many of us will be angry with me. But is it the truth? And you have no me for the truth. Imagine that Holy Spirit is in us. Imagine that Holy Spirit is in me. Is it possible for me to be dosing before Almighty God? Let us be sincere to 
ourselves. And then, this is kind of that reproach we are talking about. Somebody from Assad just come in. And they see us, we are in the presence of the Lord. And the 50% of the church have gone. Is it not a reproach? That's why, including me, including every one of us, we need to search for that, search for that Holy Spirit so that it can affect us physically, it can affect us spiritually. And God will do it in Jesus' name. There are many people that that reproach happened to in the Bible. And then let's look at the book of Judges, chapter 16. The book of Judges, chapter 16. We shall look, read from 20 to 21. 20 to 21. Book of Judges, chapter 16, 20 to 21. And she said, Philistine be upon you, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the law was departed from him. But Philistine took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and burnt him with fetter of brass and he did grand in the prison house. God will lose every one of us in Jesus' name. From all area we have been put to the spiritual prison just because of carelessness, just because of the flesh, just because of our will, just because of what and wants and not God wants, just because of disobedience to the word of the Lord, and as some sin, you were put to prison by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Deliverance is our portion today in Jesus' name. In the book of First Samuel, chapter three. First Samuel, let us see another reproach that one can have in his life. First Samuel chapter 1, 3 to 7. First Samuel chapter 1, 3 to 7. And this man went up out of his city, yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord. Of us in, in Silo, and the two sons of Eli, opening and Phineas, the priests of the law, were there. And when the time was that Elikana of offer of offer, he gave Pen eh, Penina his wife to all her son and her daughter portion, but unto Anna he gave a worthy portion, worthy for, portion for he loved Anna. But the Lord has shut up a uh, womb. And he, an uh, adversary also provoked her so for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up a uh, womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat reproach. A woman does not have a child. A woman that that has no a son. A woman that has no a daughter. Here, yeah, whenever they go, the husband given that's what dad. The husband still given a lot of things. But the reproach is this: the woman is barren. In all era, we are barren spiritually. We are being released today in Jesus' name. 
and God is going to speak to every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 25, let's see another reproach. The, the first reproach we saw is about something. A child of God, somebody like you, somebody like me, and he found himself to the extent that it was a daughter, it was a prostitute, thy soul is bad right. In our, in our own case, it may not be a prostitute. It may be money. It may be ambition. It may be carelessness. It may be my wish. It may be I. But God will be lost out today in Jesus' name. My dear brother, my dear sister, there's nothing like walking with the Lord. I would just say, from my experience this week, that walking with the Lord is more profitable than any other thing. In the sense that you will gain this world, you will gain the kingdom of God. And that one will be your portion in Jesus' name. In the book of Genesis chapter 25, 21. 25, 21. Let's see another reproach. 25, 21. And Asik entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. My dear brother in the Lord, my dear sister in the Lord, the question you need to ask yourself is this. 2016 has gone. We are now in 2017. Anna has no ch children. Rebecca A has no child. I'm very sure. That prostitute that betrays something, they have no children together. Where is your own children in the Lord? Where is those people whom you have comforted? Where is those people whom you are leading unto the Lord? Automatically. Either you accept with them or not. I'm very sorry to say it. Clearly, all of us that have no child, we are barren. But God, Almighty God, will let us be productive in the house of the Lord, in the work of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Whenever Satan is doing this, his dream is not only me, it is not only you. The dream of Satan is to ridicule Almighty God through you. Over the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. I will now be a channel whereby the name of the Lord will be draw. Or will be bring down in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 12. Let's look at what Solomon said and let's look at what his dad did. Proverbs 11, the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 12. 